Hey, this is Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid, and I have Transformers the Movie issue number one. Now, I'm filming today with my smaller camera because I can actually edit that on the fly. I don't have to convert it and things like that. Things that you don't really need to know, but I want to tell you that in case the quality or in case the focus doesn't happen real quickly, please bear with me. I'm working with this uh, camera that's not the best. The one that I have, the other one I have is really high quality, but if you notice, I have actually good lighting this time. Uh, I went out and I bought lighting. Uh, I used my friend's Amazon link. Uh, his, uh, Mike Schmidt, who is the 40-year-old boy, and this is one of his shirts. I wanted to help support him because, you know, if you're going to go through and buy something through Amazon, use somebody's Amazon link, help them out. And, uh, you know, mine's below if you want to use it. Anyway, Transformers the movie, issue number one. So here we've got Ultra Magnus and RC and Percept... Oh, no, sorry. And Hot Rod there on the front and cover. And they, uh, you know, he's holding the Matrix... Actually, uh, he's not holding the Matrix. He's holding a he's holding a gun uh, there. But you know, this is oh, also Springer, Daniel, Bumblebee, and Cup. You know, so these are basically the guys who got introduced in the movie, came out of nowhere to kill Optimus Prime. Do, you know, do all these things that kill off half of my childhood right off the bat. And um, I don't think I really got that when I was a kid. But when I was watching it again recently, you know, I'm watching some of my favorites like. You know, Ironhide, just Megatron just blasting him, and Ratchet, and Wheeljack. Wheeljack doesn't even get a death scene. He just sees his burnt-out husk. It's, it's terrible. Anyway, getting to the comic. So the comic follows, it's an adaptation of the movie, okay? So it's an adaptation of the movie, and in that, we start off with uh, information about uh, Unicron, and Unicron starts uh, eating this planet, Okay, Lithone, I think it's the planet of Lithone. And as they, you know, as he's eating this planet, there's one guy there named Cranix. And, uh, you know, poor Cranix is basically the lone survivor of this planet wide attack from the giant planet eater, Unicron. Okay, so Unicron coming through the, the galaxy. And, you know, in the movie, you get this where Unicron comes and he, you know, basically eats all of Lithone, which, it's interesting, in this one it's just like some sort of gas that, that goes in it. He doesn't actually like consume it where he does in the movie, where he just like chomps and eats the whole thing. And they actually make that standard chomping noise, that's like the only chomping noise that's ever used in, in movies. It's silly, I was watching them, I'm like, what, they only have like one sound effect? Uh, so, with him, with Unicron being energized from eating that planet, he now sets his sight on uh, Cybertron, Cybertron and its two moons. Now, Cybertron has been completely conquered by the Decepticons. This is the year 2005. Watching this with my daughter, she, she turns to me and she goes, this is a historical movie. <laughs> yeah, well, when I was a kid in 1986 and I watched it, that was the future. And so, you know, on the moon bases, we've got Ironhide, and Bumblebee, and Optimus Prime. And they're working on what they're going to do as far as, uh, you know, uh, to launch an attack on the Decepticons. And I can't believe laser tag was such a big thing that I keep seeing it over and over and over again in all, the movie, in all these uh, uh, comics. And on another base, you've got Bumblebee and Spike. Now, this is what confuses me in the comic. You've got Bumblebee with, you know, Bumblebee's here with Optimus and Ironhide, but then on the very next page, he's basically on another moon base with Daniel. Okay, so that's a little wacky. Um, Ironhide is making a special run to Autobot City on Earth because they don't have enough Energon to launch an attack on the Decepticons. So, um, you know, he, he hits that laser beak, you know, he intercepts that information and he brings it to Megatron. And here we have Megatron and Soundwave, Starscream. Megatron basically praises, uh, you know, Laserbeak and says, you know, much better than some of my other soldiers. And, you know, directly meaning uh, Starscream. You know, basically Starscream is 
they're they're on the outs and, and all that. Um, there's a lot more in the movie and the cartoon between Starscream and Megatron because you know Starscream just wants to you know, be in control of uh, the Decepticons. Well, the, the the run to Earth is happening, and as they're flying through an asteroid belt, you know they get uh, they hear like a big boom, and it's not an asteroid; it's the Decepticons. They bust through. And they just immediately take out all of the guys there. Uh, so Starscream, he attacks, he kills Brawn, and Prowl, and Ratchet, and Ironhide. Boom, 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 boom. They are all dead. Uh, except Ironhide does attempt to stop Megatron, but that is not seen in the in the comic book. Where in the movie, Ironhide grasps at him and. Megatron just takes his fusion cannon and just blasts him and kills him. It's like, this is pretty rough, you know, watching this again as, a, as an adult. Um, and so we cut over to Autobot City where Hot Rod is fishing with Daniel. And Daniel is Spike's son. So this little kid, he and, he and uh, Hot Rod are, are buddies. And so they drive off to Autobot City. Now, Autobot City, now I don't know where exactly they say it because they do say it in the comic uh yes okay it's not into the next page okay so they rush off to see the shuttle because he got a, like a warning that the, the shuttle was coming so they go to autobot city and this says that the transformers have been building autobot city for the past 20 years okay so i thought that they were robots in disguise for those past 20 years but apparently they were you know they're living on earth and they built this autobot city and all the earthlings are fine with it Daniel and Hot Rod, they go to this overlook, and in the movie they call it Lookout Mountain. In the comic, they just call it um, they just call it a Lookout Point. And so as they're looking at Lookout Point, they look down at the shuttle, and in the comic, the shuttle actually lands before they realize this. Megatron takes out all the Lookout Towers and blasts the one that Hot Rod and Daniel are on. Hot Rod, you know, saves Daniel, and uh, then Perceptor... He goes to all of the, the new guys, you know, Ultra Magnus, RC, Springer, Cup, and Blur. In the movie, these are the new guys. These are guys that, you know, you didn't have any um, you didn't have any knowledge of until until the movie. And so Springer and RC are tasked with transforming Autobot City. You know, they have to do this manually. Apparently Autobot City is uh, something that, you know, manually has to be transformed. So they go out to transform uh Autobot City, but if we get down to this panel, and hopefully you can read it, they say that Autobot City is Fortress Maximus. Now, in the movie, clearly Autobot City uh, has some elements of uh, Metroplex. Metroplex has comes with this little tank, dude, and that is clearly seen in the movie. So I always thought that Autobot City was uh, Metroplex, but apparently they're saying that it is Fortress Maximus. Uh, but at the same time, if it's Fortress Maximus, why doesn't he transform and just stomp everybody? And why does he have to be transformed by somebody else? I don't know. Well, the Decepticons have launched their attack, and uh, as they're as they're attacking, they have the Constructicons form Devastator. So even in the movie, the Constructicons are still a big deal. Devastator's still a huge deal. Uh, this has been 20 years, so where are all the other Gestalts? Where's the Superion? Where's Menasaur? Where's all those guys? Uh, so they're getting attacked. They... Um, believe that they send a message to Optimus Prime so that Optimus Prime can come in with reinforcements because they can't really hold off Devastator. So Optimus comes down with the Dinobots because everyone loves the Dinobots, at least in the cartoon. The Dinobots are awesome in the cartoon. You know, Grimlock and the guys, they just start bashing brains. They're, they're you know, tough and, you know, they all talk like me, Grimlock, and, and things like that. But there isn't like a huge challenge in the cartoon for Grimlock at superiority over Optimus Prime, at least, you know, not that, that I've seen too much of. I think maybe at one point he does try to become leader, but in the comics he definitely tries to become leader. You know, he becomes leader and he's an awful leader, as we've seen. So we'll get back to that eventually when we get back to the other comics. Uh, so in this case, Devastator, and uh, he fights the... He fights the Dinobots, but he starts winning. Optimus realizes, you know, he's got to turn the tide of the battle. 
And so he transforms and he comes rolling in. Now, in the movie, this is my absolute favorite action scene of any movie ever is Optimus Prime transforming. The music starts, Stan Bushes, the music starts, and he just rolls in and he just takes out so many of the Decepticons, crashes into him, then blasts, transforms, shoots into the air. As he's transforming, he blasts one, two, three guys, lands, and it is just such a Mm, such an awesome moment. And then he confronts Megatron. So here he confronts Megatron, and Megatron, he says to Megatron in the comic here, your reign of terror has gone on too long, Megatron, and I am here to end it. Now that is different than uh, in the uh, movie where he says, one shall stand and one shall fall. You know, that's a big, big part of the movie there. And so Megatron and Optimus, they fight. And as they're fighting here, Optimus, some of the, you know, has the upper hand. Megatron throws a, you know, piece right at him. And so there is a lot of damage happening to these two guys. And they are fighting and fighting uh, with each other. And as they, um, as they continue to fight here and here, you know, it gets to the point where he gets Megatron and he's got Megatron on the ropes. And Megatron tells him, uh, you know, no more Optimus Prime. Grant me mercy, I beg of you. And Optimus says, you who are without mercy now plead for it. I thought you were made of sterner stuff. Another powerful line from the movie. And this gives Megatron the opportunity to grab a stray blaster and... All right, there we go. It's a stray blaster and blast Optimus Prime. And as he goes to go in for the kill, Optimus Prime takes his two hands, swings up and knocks Megatron right over the edge onto the ground actually no he hits him he falls and then Optimus he's got some major wounds the Autobots come rushing in to help him now what's interesting is in the comic book there's nothing that happens with Hot Rod in here now Hot Rod in the movie just comes up and tries to um, jump Megatron and gets uh, gets totally in his way where Optimus is going to you know shoot Megatron. Was he actually going to kill Megatron? I don't know. Was he actually going to you know get to this point because Optimus Prime really I mean he is one who is going to uh, grant mercy to another uh, Transformer. Certainly he's you know that's what makes Meg Optimus Prime Optimus Prime and that's what killed me in Transformers the movie three the uh, which one was that one the Dark of the Moon where it, he basically you know, executes Megatron, and that killed me because that really changed the character of Optimus Prime. His in, like his actual character, not like Optimus Prime the character, but his actual character, and that that really got me uh, there. So, you know, the Autobots come out and they're very concerned about Optimus Prime. Uh, no, Optimus, Optimus, you, you know, don't die. You can't, and that's. Um, you know, that's Hot Rod coming running out. And at the same time, you know, you got over here, you got the Decepticons with Megatron. And the Decepticons with Megatron, uh, you got um, Starscream is like, How do you feel, mighty Megatron? <laughs> and he just kicks him. <laughs> the movie is awesome. Because, uh, you know, they have this rivalry throughout this. They uh, He has Astro Train transform and all the Decepticons, you know, escape. And as they, you know, they, they escape off off world. Now Perceptor is working on Optimus. You know, you get Optimus on this table. One of the, you know, heart wrenching scenes of, of my childhood, where Optimus here, uh, you know, they the, the wounds are fatal, and Optimus tells Ultra Magnus, you know, it is to you that I shall pass the Matrix as it was passed to me. You know, Ultra Magnus is like, but Prime, I'm just a soldier, I'm not worthy. And he says, nor was I, but one day an Autobot shall rise from our ranks and use the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour. You know, light our darkest hour, that is a big deal for the Transformers. And uh, so Optimus Prime, apparently, he had this button on his chest the long, whole longest time, and he clicks out the, you know, the Matrix, which doesn't look like the Matrix in the movie, which... The Matrix in the movie, that is what I, I will always, you know, associate with the, mag the Matrix of leadership. Then Optimus Prime, he dies. Ultra Magnus now is the leader of the, uh, of the Autobots. Now, what's interesting in this is that in the movie, Optimus is handing the 
Matrix to Ultra Magnus, and he falters, and he drops it. Hot Rod grabs it and ca 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 catches it before it hits the ground. But when that happens, you know, you hear the music come up, and, and there's something he feels when he touches the Matrix. So obviously we know, you know, <clears throat> that Hot Rod will eventually become Rodimus Prime because the Matrix itself really chose Hot Rod, but Optimus chose, you know, um, Ultra Magnus, who is the obvious choice to lead because he was the leader of Autobot City. Um, and, you know, when he takes off all his armor, he looks like Optimus Prime too. And so then Optimus Prime, he dies. Um, and Unicron is actually watching this because, you know, in the Transformers, there are always these universal televisions where they can see everything that's happening. Uh, Astro Train, as he's flying, he says, you know, I can't make it to Cybertron. We had to jettison some weight. So the strongest, not throw out the weakest, all the Decepticons who are uh, hurt and who are dying. It's, and in the movie, it's basically the Insecticons and um, two of the Seekers, uh, Thundercracker and Skywarp. All right, let's get rid of those guys and, you know, basically kill those guys off. Uh, Megatron and those and those uh, those robots, they float through space, but they are pulled to Unicron. And Unicron tells Megatron that he is going to reformat him, give him a new body and new soldiers, but he must serve Unicron. Now, Megatron serves no one. Megatron is like, you don't own me. Um, you know, he, he is not going to, to be uh, controlled by anyone. And so, despite that, he still goes along with Unicron. And, you know, Unicron, in, in the comic book, is some sort of, like, gas that does the reformatting. And he reformats all the, you know, the Broken Down Warriors. And we get Cyclonus, and we get Scourge, and we get the Sweeps, and we get, like, you know, there are other guys in the armada apparently there's like you know seven or eight of them that that are in this thing but whatever you know it the the numbers really never match up and so in the end we get galvatron okay galvatron is now megatron reformatted and we are heading towards judgment day which is the going to be the second issue with transformers the movie the adaptation the comic book and you know a lot is packed into that one Basically, all your favorite guys from, you know, your childhood die, and uh, new guys are introduced. And then from there, uh, we we go on from the, the next part of the movie. It, that is a natural stopping point within this comic. Great for the next issue. So in the next issue, issue number two, we're going to see what happens here. All right, well, so we got Hot Rod and Grimlock fighting Sharktacons. I may or may not show you that one tomorrow, depending on how much time I have. I had extra time today to do a video, and obviously this is running long. It's already 20 minutes or 18 minutes uh, long. So this is Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook as Big Damn Kid. You can also find me at BigDamnKid.com where eventually I am going to write up everything that I've been talking about uh, for the past mm, two, three weeks where I haven't had a chance to really do any of that. But anyway, hey, I'd love it if you'd like, if you subscribe, that'd be fantastic. But most of all, thanks for watching.